So the, from a technical point of view, um, so we, we come to the, the, the matter of the notice of motion, and uh, at this stage it hasn't um, been moved and seconded. We've had the notice uh, describing uh, the mover is Aaron Kewan and the seconder is uh, Sam McDonald. Um, and uh, clause 22.4 of the standing order states that only the mover at the time the notice of motion is moved and with the agreement of a majority of those present at the meeting may alter a proposed notice of motion. Once moved and seconded, no amendments may be made to a notice of motion. So I understand that um, you wish to amend the notice of motion requires the majority of the those present at the meeting to alter a proposed notice of motion. So, um, so would can can we get the? This is the amended motion. Yeah. Which takes out the energy. So I'm going to read it out. So is that it, is that it in front of me now? So that the council directs staff to conclude consultation on the project as per the 8th of March date with an additional information session to be held in Bishopdale. Direct staff to meet with key stakeholders along Hereward Road to mitigate any potential design issues based off the initial feedback. Um, and thirdly, and probably most importantly, direct staff to produce a range of design options for the community boards to consider in public workshops prior to the commencement of the hearings process. Um, so uh, that's that's the, the resolution that, that you wish to move, Aaron, and you wish to second um, Sam. And so the first uh, motion that we will deal with is that the uh, notice of motion is able to be, that the notice of motion that was given is able to be amended. So, 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 and it's them moving and seconding. Sorry, um, only the mover at the time the notice of motion is moved and with the agreement of the majority. So Aaron's indicated he wants to move that to enable that to happen. Then um, we need the agreement of the majority of the meeting. So is that a debatable motion? Um, I don't believe so. It's a procedural motion. So I'm going to put that motion. I'm going to put the, it is a procedural motion that the motion be able to be, that the notice of motion as presented on the agenda of this council is able to be um, amended in the way as, that has been described. No. And it is a, um, it is a, it is a majority decision of council, and sorry, I wasn't aware that it was a procedural motion, um, so I've just been advised that it's a procedural motion, so I can't share my view, which is um, my strong desire for it to carry, but uh, there I did. Um, I'm, I can't, I can't. I've been told it's a procedural motion. I thought it was a debatable motion. I didn't know that it was, excuse me, I do apologise to the meeting, but I didn't know that a majority of the meeting was required to change it. I thought the mover and seconder could change the motion, and uh, I felt that um, considerable goodwill had been shown um, by the two councillors concerned in order to... Uh, provide us with a way forward. Leon, could I but suggest I that we move no out of standing orders? I have no we alternative could move out of standing other than to, to ask a questions. procedural motion. Mm. No. Procedural motion is second at the chair. discussion or debate. Okay. The first two are what staff do Sorry. anyway. Yeah. I do a we suspend standing orders and get people get their questions answered. Yeah, good idea. I'll second it. Let's just get this sorted. It's ridiculous. Thank you. 
I'm just seeking advice. Would the meeting agree to suspend standing orders to enable the questions to be asked? No. Um, look. All right. So that's um, that. That is really helpful. Thank you very much. I'm going to put the motion that the uh, notice of motion uh, be allowed to be um, amended. Uh, I'll put that motion in, and given that there's controversy on the subject, I'll ask that, uh, that staff conduct a ballot of the meeting, starting with me. The Mayor. Aye. Councillor Galloway. Aye. Councillor Johansson. Yes. Councillor Turner. Yes. Councillor McClellan. Yes. Councillor Major. Thank you. Now we'll open up um, debate on the. Sorry, that 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 is that. Sorry, that is that is fair comment because um, I have. Uh, I asked for uh, time in order to take advice uh, prior to the opening up of the debate. Um, since which time we have accepted that the, a change to the wording of the motion. So I will allow questions. Mike. Um, I'm pretty happy with the fir first two. That's pretty much what we're doing any, anyhow. Um, and I, I do note about the Bishop Dale. Why Bishop Dale not Papua Nui's then? It's obviously there's two community board areas that are affected by this proposal, and now we're going to do three drop-in sessions in one of the community board areas and not the other one? We hand over to our... Uh, Sorry. Very simple answer. It was right in the middle of the route. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I guess uh, I'd just like to get an understanding of the third point. Um, what is meant by consider? Um, please. Uh, they're good. Well, staff always prepare um, uh, a range of design options after a consultation process, but perhaps if I hand over to Lynette, would you like to talk about that? I would, I would expect, so my interpretation of that is that we, we have a range of options that can be discussed, debated, and the pros and cons of them can be discussed in an, in a, in an open environment. So can I just the outcome have is assurance that the that result is the result of that will be sorry sorry oh, sorry I, I just want to get insurance because I'm actually happy with what the process that has been put out. It's just actually where there are decision making points that come along this process, and I just want to make sure that consider is actually not going to the board to actually getting them to make a decision right. on whether they accept the design or not. I, I, I think it's really good that we involve the boards, um, but it's a metropolitan project, so it's important that the decision making actually lies with the committee. So to reconfirm, so members are all clear, this is a metropolitan project. It is this council's decision, not the community board's decision. The committee. The committee makes the, the committee's decision. Yeah, well, not okay. council meeting. Sarah and Jake. Um, just following on from that, are we expecting from the consideration um, a recommendation or feedback? We always take feedback from, from the feed, community. Feedback, feedback from the boards. Yeah, this is our interpretation. Feedback from the boards to us, and then we would make a recommendation 
into the hearings panel and they would understand what the board's views were. Yeah, so but just to be super clear, we are not getting a recommendation from the boards um, to the hearings panel. There is nothing for the no. boards to recommend to. Yeah. That's no. Not their, just, no. Thanks. Jake? So if consider isn't uh, decision making and it's not a recommendation, what's the um, what's the consider what's the uh, what has been achieved? What's the concession? Do you want me to? So I, I, I think, as as Councillor Davidson has noted, this was probably the process we were looking to follow, regardless, given that the range of interests. So it really just reiterates what we would have probably done anyway. So but but I think. What you're seeing as we get to the end of the formal consultation process, and as we alluded to earlier on, that's not necessarily that we don't stop the conversations then. What we're now saying is that we would also have um, workshops with both of the community boards, which are open to the public, and we would outline options within those, and we would take on board all that feedback, and then we would do... The next steps would be that we would report that to the hearings panel. Is that different? To Although what would it anyway? may be, if if it's a significant change, like putting it on one side, two laned instead of split across the two sides, yeah. then you'd actually have to go out for another set Consult. of consultation, yeah. Yeah. another that, round of consultation. But, and that that an assessment of that would have to be made through this process as well yeah. at the time, and yeah. staff do that all the time. Yeah. And you would get feedback from the community boards on that as well. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So how is that different to what would have happened anyway? It's it's so not it's, a question Well, I'm just of, making sure that we're clear that, that there is no change. Yeah. The, uh, Jake, the, perhaps the uh, operative words in number three are a range of options. The... Uh, uh, an assurance that it's uh, not an option that's being pushed through, that there is a range and they are discussed, so it's not limited to one. That's the main function of that n number three. It is, and I think that's really helpful. Yep. Thank you. Sarah? Uh, thanks so much. Um, so just to be clear, I'm just wondering, while we've had staff's interpretation of what this means, what I don't want to do is get to the point in you know um, September August or somewhere like that, and that the the councils disagree with staff's interpretation. So I'm just wondering if we could check with the mover um, to see that he agrees with the staff's interpretation of this, and that we're not expecting a recommendation or anything from the board. Just feedback, mm. because what I don't want to do is to get into this situation again where the board said, "Well, we were expecting one thing," um, and so I want to be clear. That they agree with the interpretation. The chief no. executive has just explained the way it is. So no, well, I don't want the councillors to come back and say that's not what we understood. The, the, the chief executive has answered the question, and I do not believe that this um, uh, process is designed for individual councillors to question other councillors about what the intention is. We've heard from the chief executive about what the process. Um, will be, and that is the end of that matter. Now, I had Aaron, you had a question. I think my question might answer Sarah's question. Um, that is around that process of when it goes to the community boards and there's various options there, if there's various options, because the consultation process might come back that the public overwhelmingly want the current design. And our boards always said they'd support what the public say. But if it doesn't, and then the staff, like Lynette said to us, is making changes um, and, uh, and they're listening, and then they make some various changes, uh, and they're then shown to the community board. The community board is allowed to say that option B out of those three is our preferred option. It's not a decision, but they would say that is what that board preferred. Correct. We would make it clear to the hearings panel what the board's views were. We realise it's not a binding decision, but it is we our preferred option is number B out of that, you have except a, for at that corner when we made it, and staff made that really clear <laughs> that that is 
That's what thing. we're looking today. Brilliant. Thank you. Because that way the view of our community is expressed to the full council. Whether the full council listen or not is up to them at the time. It'll be the it'll be the um, urban development and transport committee, which has the delegation for the decision. I, sorry, I thought there's a review of the committee structure coming up halfway through the term. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be. So it but might be not the be the chair at that by time. then. No, just. <laughs> Jimmy. She let it slip. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I just want to know if a uh, design, a uh, different option are uh, uh, presented to the uh, company board. Company board choose one of them, but those one of them is different from the current consultation process. Whether still go to the hearing process directly or still go to the uh, the consultation process. Ultimately, I think what the chief executive was saying was that ultimately staff will make a recommendation to go to the um, hearings panel, um, so that there'll be there'll be one of the options will go through to the hearings panel. But it may be that the significance of the change that has been made may mean that there's another consultation process prior to the hearings panel being set up. And I think that's what needs to be really clarified today. And by putting in that phrase, a range of design options, it's crystal clear. Thank you. Yeah? OK. All right, well, we'll open it. Yeah. OK. So I just want to clarify, the original notice of motion had immediately suspend the, these three um, parts to this motion, there's no suggestion here that there's any suspension of anything. Mm. We're carrying on, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Fine. All right. So um, I'll open it up for um, for debate. Um, Aaron, you can open the debate if you want to, um, and you can close it as well because you're the mover. Okay. If, yeah. if, if I you. could, thank you. Um, I'll uh, start by uh, actually... Um, and I didn't think this would be where I'm starting, uh, is actually thanking the Mayor and the staff uh, for where we've got to today, um, because this has been pretty awkward to get to this point. So I will thank them uh, for that uh, and for what the staff have been through so far, especially um, when the design first came out and uh, the, the confrontation of some of the people uh, in the ward that I represent has um, certainly been there. And so the staff have had to uh, go through some probably some pretty tough discussions with those um, people. Uh, and, uh, and abuse of, of anyone is, is, should not be tolerated, and, uh, and so of our staff is unacceptable as well. Um, I uh, have had a lot of feedback around this, and I do thank Sam for uh, working with us today uh, to get to this point, um, and, uh, and the mayor and the staff that helped us before to make some... Um, concessions, I'm going to call them, because we have compromised to get to an outcome that hopefully the entire table can agree on if the entire table agrees on listening to its community and aiming for an outcome where the whole community can do well out of it. And that includes the people that walk and cycle through uh, the Hewood Ward. Um, the feedback I've had from most people, the majority of people who oppose us, and that's not everyone, but the feedback is that they're not opposed to cycleways and cycling, that they do want to see it. They're just not happy with the particular design they've seen. And like Lynette's made clear to us is that they are listening at the drop-in sessions and they will look at all of the submissions and go, well, here's some clear examples of where we could be making change because uh, that is what the public's clearly telling us. Um, what I did receive last night, um, and it can't be tabled as a regular petition, so I'm not tabling it, I'm just holding it up, uh, is a petition that was collected because it only started on Saturday from residents who live in Hewood Road, and, uh, and it was we, the undersigned, asked the Mayor and Councillors to support the Community Board Notice of Motion, halting the current and blah, blah, uh, to lead uh, to changes led by the community. This isn't exactly that. But 223 people signed this out of 227. One was strongly supportive of the current design and didn't want to sign it. The other four had not read the piece of paper. And a uh, majority of these, I were told, couldn't get it off the piece and carrying it fast enough. So that they live exactly on Hewood Road. 
So uh, I would ask my fellow councillors today, uh, let's move through this process relatively um, quickly and painlessly, uh, and uh, we don't need to um, uh, get into a, a, a mudslinging match because we're all going to still get an outcome of a cycleway on Herewood Road uh, that will hopefully, after this, work for everyone because our local community board members, and we'll invite the rest of the community board, will be at that drop-in session working with the staff to uh, collect as much information before the staff go away and do the work. And I don't think you can ask better than that. The staff, the public, have thought that the meeting so far was something quite different. They haven't warmed to the current design that well, but the staff have made it really clear they're willing to listen to those submissions. So, uh, yes, this will be a little bit bumpy still, uh, but I think we can get to a solution that can work for everyone, and I ask everyone to support it. Um, yeah, thank you. I just wanted to um, enter in the debate early because I'm not the mover and therefore don't get to cl close the debate. So uh, I just wanted to say uh, a big thank you to everyone who I think has shown incredible goodwill to try and uh, bring things to a, a, a position where where we can work with uh, both staff and, and, and community in order to get a good result. Uh, it's it's been very difficult, and you know we, we heard this morning um, from one of the uh, presenters about the challenges of of the original decision that was um, made to uh, bring the the, the cycleway um, design and, and consultation forward uh, in order to um, in, in order to address the the issue of the intersection early uh, in the in the next financial year. Uh, now that we're on a slower track, I think it is giving us time to take um, to take to take breath and to and to work through uh, all of the issues. And I, I really appreciate the the hard work that people have put in to try and achieve that. I, I kind of want to acknowledge the staff. I, I went out with Lynette um, last or well, the week before last to visit one of the. Um, uh, businesses down Herewood Road, and and it was really good to be able to sit down and hear what those concerns were, but also to hear um, a staff member that was absolutely committed to problem solving. You know, not not to hear, you know, either side of um, you know a, a debate that was out here, but actually the specific problems that are being raised. What could we do? to engage with you and your business and your customer base um, to design a really safe um, and, and good experience um, all around. So, uh, and I, I, I'm very much of the view that in a council environment, sometimes things get, you know, the temperatures uh, do, do get raised. We all get emotionally involved in, in various things, and I have from time to time myself. But I think that if we if we can take the temperature down and and actually engage in a way that enables people to be, feel that um, they're being listened to and that they can be part of designing a good solution uh, that will lead to good outcomes, then I think that really uh, is a job well done today. So I, I'm very hopeful that we get the support around the table uh, for this um, re this resolution. Uh, I, you know, uh, yeah. I, I just would like to thank um, everyone, but particularly staff. I know that it has been very challenging in environments when people turn up expecting one thing and it's something else. Um, but you've done a sterling job thus far, and um, look forward to the next step. Uh, Pauline. Yeah, thank you. Look, is it, I don't really know where to start with this. I just think it's the most bizarre um, item I've ever kind of been through on the agenda. Um, I've been involved in these cycleways pretty much from the beginning and we've had bumps like this along the way and staff, to me, have absolutely proved themselves that they are problem solvers, that they do care about people, they do listen, they have repeated um, engagements, they have individual meetings with people, they're doing all of that and I kind of like to apologise for the fact that we are trying to remind you of your job here, that you are doing extremely well. We had the board chair in here today from your um, committee, Sam and Aaron, saying that he was proud of the Papanui Parallel 
that he was proud of the involvement. And that process was exactly the same. It had incredible backlash from people. We got there. And your chair also said, with the right amount of communication and attitude, I'm sure we'll get there. We do have communication. We do have the right attitude. So I'm not going to go on any longer because I think we've spent just so long on this. Um, I don't know. I would really prefer to abstain from that because I don't think it's, there's any relevance to it because you're already doing all of mm. that. But I'm going to wait to the end of the debate. I'll either abstain or support it. But I do want to apologise. Uh, Anne Galloway. Uh, kia ora. Um, as a result of this excellent question and answer session this morning, particularly with staff and our discussions and deliberations, I'm convinced that the consultation for the Wings to Wheels um, cycleway has been thorough and reliable. I'm also convinced that as a result of the engagement with the community and the conversations that will be had, that there will be changes made to this plan, as has happened in the past, with other major cycleway projects. I am convinced by the, the statistics that we are presented with almost daily that we have health issues, especially with our children due, due to inactivity. And I'm also convinced that unless parents feel that their children can safely walk, scooter or bike to school, we will not get kids out of cars. We will continue to have traffic congestion and we will continue to poison our environment. So I will, I will therefore support this amended notice of motion as it will not delay the implementation of infrastructure that will mean that children in this community can walk, cycle and scooter to school and cross busy roads safely. Thank you. Thank you. Tim. Thank you. I'm, I'm not going to dwell on the process we've got here. I think what the, what the key thing for me is that the... Um, perception is nine-tenths of the law, and this council and this decision will firmly put the community at the forefront of this decision-making, and that's what was asked for, and I think it's a really clear way to go forward. So um, it has been um, awkward, but um, we've got, I think we've got to the right, right end. Andrew. Oh. Thank you. Um, this, this, um, <laughs> this is now really simple. Anne, um, could you mute your microphone? Oh, right. This is now really simple, um, certainly appears to be very simple. If what we've got in front of us here is genuinely acceptable to the mover and the seconder, and I'm guessing it must be, otherwise it wouldn't be there, I fail to see why there was a need for a notice of motion in the first place. But we are where we are. We're debating this much-changed notice of motion now. This bears very little resemblance to what was originally put forward. So the key point, and we've just heard it from staff, I'll quote from you, Richard, this is the process we were looking to follow regardless. That was the advice we had from staff just a few minutes ago. So what's now proposed was always able to occur as part of the consultation process that's already underway, and that over 500 people have submitted to in good faith. What we're doing is reconfirming the existing process and its features. This whole thing and the time it's taken has actually resulted in no change. The meeting today is allowed, and this has been useful um, for some clarification of the process. And I also appreciate and acknowledge the work that's been done resulting in this now much revised notice of motion, which is quite different from what was originally proposed. So I think the important message coming out today is to encourage people in the community to engage in the process, to have confidence it's robust, confident that it allows people to be heard, with the additional um, information that's come out of this meeting that confirms it and perhaps makes it a little bit easier to understand. And the other thing that needs to come out of it is confidence in the community that the consultation feedback will genuinely be taken into account and can genuinely drive change. And we've seen examples of that in the past. This example is no different. And I also want to encourage all of us around this table and around the tables of the two involved community boards to involve community boards, to support where we've got to today and to work with and not against the process and to acknowledge the goodwill that's been shown around this table today and I hope will be shown in the result of the um, debate that we're having now. So given that I was always going to be comfortable with the current process and its ability to be enhanced or added to as necessary, it follows naturally 
that I'm going to be happy to support this notice of motion today that simply reinforces that current process. Jimmy. Mayor, well, as one of decision makers, I always support clear, robust, reasonable decision making. I'm honest, uh, if the original law, law to motion, I'm not support. But this one is a su sudden amendment, but I fully, you know, order to review those ones, I would like to support. Because why this one actually, you know, two kind of law to motion move, and second, uh, this amendment is considered, you know, those uh, respect uh, the 550 uh, submissions already feedback to the council. The other ones, have uh, four weeks to go. We assume more the 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 submission will feedback uh, from the other uh, community, from individuals. So we have to respect uh, all those the people. They you know the a uh, large uh, number of people have already the uh, submitted. That's very important. So this the uh, existing the uh, consultation the process we can see actually is open, transparent. Uh, and also democratic the uh, process. The other one is uh, we go ahead, particularly now amendment, we go ahead still, you know, until the, uh, the 8th of March, it's expiry day. So all of the submission has been a feedback. Then in that time start, engage with key stakeholders along the whole world to try to, you know, to review any the the, the area, you know, particularly regarding to a design can be improved. That's, that, that, that's pretty good. That's what you know, my expectation, you know, we can have opportunity to engage with the affected uh, community, you know, can improve. That's most uh, the, uh, important. And also, the, this not take uh, any the additional time, additional cost. So that's why the, I changed my mind, because of through the amendment, I support this amendment notice motion. Thank you. Uh, Sarah Dinyani. Uh, kia ora. It's fantastic to see councillors change their minds based on the clear evidence today and back down on their call to stop the consultation and to back the process already in place. So now we have a notice of motion saying let's keep doing what we're already doing, so I guess I'll vote for it. We spent an hour on questions for a notice of motion that now doesn't exist. It's frustrating, but I'm really glad that councillors have committed to lowering the heat and working with the community and staff to get good outcomes for residents. We know that cycleways are contentious. They're contentious everywhere. But we also know from experience that once a cycleway is in place and people get used to the new road layouts, that the controversy dies away. Cycling numbers increase, and anyone who has looked at a finished cycleway heading into town during rush hour will see the queues of people on bikes at the traffic lights. Not only that, the percentage of riders who are women biking on our separated cycleways has risen to 40% in the national average, well below 30 Girls High next to the unicycle has seen numbers increase from 5 to 15% of students cycling to school since the cycleway went in. A city is a balancing act, where we try to cater for the needs of all and the desires of many. Just like new roads, cycleways are built for expected future demand. We didn't see people driving through the fields before the Northern Corridor was built, but now that it's open, they're there, and it's the same with cycleways. No transport project is expected to be full as soon as it opens either. That wouldn't be good future planning, but build it and they will come. And let's not ignore the biggest issue of our time. Any delay to cycleways is a delay to climate action. It's clear from the draft advice of the Climate Commission that we're going to have to double our cycling numbers in a short time frame. And it's also abundantly clear that Waka Kotati will be directed to make it happen with additional funding. We need good plans in place to make the most of these opportunities, much like the $100 million opportunity we've had with the shovel ready funding, because we were ready for it. So let's build a permanent, safe cycleway so that those who want to bike can do so without fear. And let's get on with reducing our city's transport emissions. Let's fix the many safety issues raised by residents over the years and make it safer for those in cars as well. Let's do this once, let's do it right, let's do it now. Yanni. Thank you. Um, I think one of the tragedies of this whole discussion has been that this is seen as a uh, uh, a pro or an anti cycleway issue. In my mind, it's not that at all. I mean, there's a huge irony that one of the biggest um, concerns has been raised by a place called the Copenhagen Bakery um, in terms of cycling. That's been held up, that, that um, city, as an example in the past. And Councillor Kewan has been one of the people that has, from the start, introduced the whole idea of spending money and investing 
to get cycleways in our city. So I want to acknowledge that. To me, this is about how we do things as a council. Our delegations policy states very clearly, council supports the principle of delegating decision making to the lowest competent level. This makes best use of the abilities of elected members, ensuring the cost effective use of resources and promoting the development of efficient and effective management. I cannot accept that we've got community boards who despite giving feedback, don't inspire a single change to a design that goes out for consultation. We have to learn from this and we have to improve in how we do things. And I think I welcome the opportunity to consider the delegations to um, the committee and the community boards, especially if we're looking at our committee structure, because I do not accept, just because something's metropolitan, that the board should not have a formal right to make recommendations to council or the committee on issues that are of utmost importance to its local community. And I think that would help give clarity around some of these issues. So I'm supportive of what's been um, put in front of us. I suspect that we would have actually went out for an additional round of consultation anyway, because it seems very obvious from what I've heard uh, that people have significant concerns about the proposed design. And it's better that we're upfront and consider that possibility now rather than wait for the end of the process without making these decisions today. So I support what's been put up. I hope that we can review and ensure that going forward we get some really good clarity about local decision making and community board input into things like the cycleways so that we can be clear going forward that we don't have to repeat the, this sort of um, discussion. So I'm um, really happy to support uh, what's in front of us. Um, let's get on and engage our community and be open-minded, transparent, and support our community boards being involved. Melanie. Um, this will be quite short. Um, it's clear that um, Christchurch City Council is not behind the death of democracy, as some in the public forum tried to suggest this morning, but in fact the opposite. We want to hear um, people's views and consider them um, in the process to make our final decisions. And although I may not always agree with councillors Kewan and McDonald, <laughs> um, I think... Um, yeah, now, the, now with the new um, notice of motion that they've presented, um, I'm pretty happy to um, go with that because it's absolutely the right thing to do. Thank you. Uh, Sam. Yeah, thank you very much, Lee. And, and I want to acknowledge you actually at the start. You've basically taken Aaron and I under your wing this morning uh, to make a, a sensible outcome of this. And I think it's quite disappointing actually to hear a few, a few councillors uh, criticise a pragmatic approach to something. It would be nice if you guys did get on board with that at some stage. I won't mention you by name, though, Sarah. Um, the, the, look, I think the, the real frustration, um, you know, that someone mentioned earlier on was around the time wasting. And, you know, Aaron mentioned earlier on the fact that we have a committee review structure uh, coming through. We've had two committees of the whole already this year that have lasted for no more than an hour. So if we're talking about how we efficiently use time at council, uh, you know, we should probably look at that as well. Look, there is changes as a result of this notice of motion. And I do take a wee bit of exception. And I get the political side of it where people are trying to make out that we've done nothing. Um, but the reality is, the environment we're in now, we had to do this in a public forum. Our community board was briefed in uh, late November. There were no design changes as a result of our, our outrageous criticism to it. Um, it's entirely appropriate that we have options presented to us for the community board uh, to have some form of view on, and I think we should take the public along with it. Um, so, look, I think this is actually a really pragmatic, sensible approach. Um, we were never opposed to cycleways, much to, um, you know, I think the... the the public comments of a couple of count, well, not a couple, two councillors uh, around this kind of stuff. And you know, the, the thing is, we're actually all about um, modal change where we can, as long as it's not wrecking uh, other people's lives. And so, what this does by presenting options is it allows our community to have a real say. And I think it's actually just sad that in this environment we've had to do it in such a public way to ensure we get options. Um, and that's not a reflection on the council staff at all. It's perhaps a reflection around this council table. But like I say, I'm really looking forward to the committee review structure. Uh, as a result of that. So thank you again, and I think it's been really useful. Um, and, and Aaron, I know you've copped a lot of flack over the last week on this, um, but it's actually wonderful you've stood up for your community, and this is a really good outcome for them. So I'd hate for that to get lost in translation. Uh, Jake? Um, I just wanted to commend the amended notice of motion. I think it's a fantastic endorsement of the process that's been. It's a compliment to our staff and the work that they've already done. Um, and I think it's humbling that Councillors McDonald and Kewan have done a real U-turn on this one today. 
Um, and I, I, I think it's, it's admirable. Uh, however, what's less than admirable is how much time we've spent here today talking about this and, and actually what a huge waste of ratepayers' money this has been. Incredibly disappointing. Right. Um, would you like to close the debate, Aaron? James? Sorry? Oh, sorry. Okay. Mike as well. oh, James well, no. and Mike. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go now. Um, look, it's good that I'm following on the back of Jake because I agree with uh, much of what he said because um, we've spent a hell of a lot of time going nowhere. And I just want to go back, though, to 2013 when these 13 major cycle routes were, uh, um, were approved by council. And I note that not one of them is in the northeastern part of the city. And uh, somehow the business to Bottle Lake Cycleway got, didn't make the cut. But if this is what you have to go through to have one of them, yeah, nah, I'm all right. <laughs> but look, I want to make it clear that I would not have supported the original notice of motion to have an immediate suspension of consultation, uh, but I can support this amended no, uh, notice of motion. Um, although, frankly, I don't see how we're doing anything different to what we would have done anyway. So, as Jake says and James says, it's been a hell of a lot of time wasted, I think. We're going to do what we were supposed to do anyway. Thank you. Hi. Um, thank you. Um, look, I echo quite a bit of what um, Councillor Daniels has said. This has actually, this is two hours where we're pretty much going to end where we, we started with actually a consultation process that is robust and working. And I acknowledge Councillor Kewan and McDonald who actually have listened to the staff and heard what the process is and realised it actually is the right process and will continue to do it. The biggest actually um, impact that we have had was at the um, Urban Development and Transport Committee meeting when, when the was decided that actually would extend it for two weeks. That had the biggest impact because that's actually allowed more time in the whole process before we get to a decision point to ensure that there is proper engagement. Um, it has been disappointing some of the comments that have been made to, I think, um, roll up parts of the community. And I, look, I really hope that we actually work together to support a consultation project so we get the best outcome. Um, and it's interesting because when we talk about community, what is the community we're talking about? There are lots of different communities when it comes to cycleways. There's residential communities, business communities, there's the cycling communities, school communities, and we've got to make sure that we take every one along and listen to them all. Um, but fundamentally, what we need to achieve at the end of this is safer uh, infrastructure for people that bike. Um, that is the goal of the, the cycleways, and we know when we do it properly and we build these cycleways, People use them, um, and they, they work. So I'm really hoping that actually as we move forward um, and we follow a process that we were already going to follow, um, that we actually work together instead of actually fighting against each other. This, this cycleway goes through two different wards, uh, the Hillwood and Papua Nui. Uh, the community board that I'm on has supported the consultation process. We have been through... Um, cycleway consultations before um, and we know that it is bumpy but it, it works and you end up getting an outcome at the end that actually meets the majority of people's desires. You're never going to please everyone, you can't, but you will please the majority of people. Um, so let's stop banging heads against each other and start working together um, Sam, <laughs> for a better outcome. So. Yeah, I, I think this is good that, that it, going forward, if we've got some of these contentious issues, the best part I like about item three is we're a range of designs. Now, if we'd had a range of designs that went out early on, it might not have racked up half of those 500 people and we'd get there a lot easier. But I think when, it, when it's difficult, especially when we're thinking about chopping off four lanes down to two, if we can, when we go out at the start, say, this is what we could do, but this is what we might do, or throw people with a couple of different suggestions at the start. Right, Aaron, would you like to close the debate, please? Um, yeah, I would, actually. Uh, I'll waste some more time. Um, and money. And money. Because, uh, like has been pointed out by some of my fellow councillors, they've found this a waste of time. I haven't, and I don't think Sam has either, because uh, this 
what we've, all the time we've wasted on this is actually incredibly important to the people that I represent, the people in my ward that are emailing me, calling me and texting me all day, every single day. Uh, well, not exactly, but I get several a day uh, on this issue at the moment. And, uh, and I want to represent them because Phil was right. If we'd gone out with multiple options, we would have had a completely different um, outcome from the community uh, because to the community it looked like we had an option we're coming out to tell you what it is and then we're going to deliver it within a year it didn't say tell us all the things you want and we'll make a whole lot of changes because it but that's what the staff are trying to do so through the noise hopefully this waste of time today will get us to a point where we can move forward it's not the same process it is not the same process because when it comes back to the uh, community board uh, with various options, the community board will have a say, and at that point, the rest of this city will right. find out whether this table is full of hollow words on this particular date, because they won't be listening. They'll go ahead with their preconceived ideas rather than looking at the feedback that the staff will spend hundreds of hours on putting together plans and options, and then the council will vote on it. And some councillors might dig their toes in and just vote the way they were always going to vote because that's what our council's often accused of. But we'll find out. Maybe the words today have genuine meaning. And uh, I look forward to that, and hopefully the people of this table listening to our community, because for me, cycling is important. It's not just about climate change. It's about people's own personal health. You can live longer and have a happier life, although some of them I look at, they don't look very happy, but there are ones that do look happy. Um, and, uh, and so I encourage people to cycle. Uh, Putting in cycleways is not going to save the planet. I just want to clear that up with everyone. A number of things will save the planet. A change in energy use, a change in work structures, but having congestion on roads does not do it. And Thank that's you. a debate for another day. That's a debate. That is a debate for another day. I shall put the motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed aye. say no. Any abstentions? That's carried. Thank you very much. I'll declare the meeting closed.